Welcome everybody to our next talk, Electronic Evidence and Criminal Matters, an introduction and critique of the EC proposal for a regulation. Our speaker is Klaus Landefeld. He is a member of the board of the ECO Association of the Internet Industry, and he's also in the board of directors at the DKIX Group AG. And um, usually at first sight you would think that it is a good idea to have an easier way for law enforcement authorities to secure electronic evidence when there is the suspicion that maybe there was a crime committed. That sounds reasonable at first, but um, as is often the case with such proposals, there are some shady side effects that people either have not thought of or they have thought of them, but they don't care. Particularly, there's a lot of concern when it comes to data privacy. And Klaus is going to tell us now what the problem is and what should be done about it. So please give a big warm round of applause for Klaus and have fun. Yeah, a proposal for a regulation on European production and preservation for electronic evidence and criminal matters is a very ungainly name. And um, it it's, has come out as cumbersome as one might expect. So what's it all about? Um, it's actually a proposal from the Commission um, from April this year um, with a proposed regulation. Regulation meaning it will become direct law in every country. So there don't need to be any transmutation into national law. Um, and let's be very clear right from the onset, this is about access to stored data by law enforcement. So this is not about mass surveillance or preemptive measures or something like that. There needs to be an ongoing investigation. Um, and this is about um, gaining evidence for that ongoing uh, investigation. Um, so it compels service providers who enable legal or natural persons in one or more member states um, to use the services listed, I'll explain what that means, um, to directly cooperate with law enforcement from another member state. Usually that never happens. So you're only talking to law enforcement in your own member state. Um, and that's actually what is different. Um, so the scope of the regulation is that a service provider is supposed to provide a full copy of all stored data. So I go into data types a bit later as well, um, from the inquiring member state. Um, so data types could be everything, telephone records, email transaction data, uh, communication data, cloud storage, anything. Um, and the authorization uh, and the limitations for the access exclusively follow the law of the requesting member state, meaning the state where the investigation is actually happening. So it doesn't matter where you are, um, which law system you you under, um, the only law which is um, required to be upheld at that point in time is the law of the inquiring member state, which is one of the big problems of the uh, proposal. Um, so is isn't even a requirement to even involve the state where you reside in uh, or even inform the authorities that data was requested from a service provider in your country. Um, uh, so which type of services are covered? I think that's one of the most essential part. So the commission um, made a, a presentation for that at the uh, Sea Open meeting in, uh, in May um, and gave some examples of service providers. So everything you'll see in the next three slides is not from me. This is actually the examples provided by the Commission. Um, uh, and it, it's three areas. It's electronic communication service as defined by the um, European Electronic Communication Code. Um, it um, uh, is also inf uh, information society services. That means things like social networks, online marketplaces, um, uh, uh, other services facilitating transactions, uh, hosting service providers, all this stuff. But also internet domain name, um, uh, registrars and registries, IP numbering services, and things like that. Um, so um, what were the examples given by the commission? Uh, for access service, they used uh, BT, Vodafone, NetClone, every internet access service, be it via um, fixed line or mobile, is basically covered. That also covers, um, in principle at least, Wi-Fi providers, um, even so it's very difficult, obviously, to get some data from them. Um, it's also interpersonal communication services, so everything, uh, email, SMS, uh, stuff like that. Um, so they use KPN, Vodafone, Tele2, la la la, but you'll see also Telegram, Skype, uh, WhatsApp, Signal. So they're after every type of uh, interpersonal communication, also email services, everything. Um, a bit more tricky is the conveyance of signals. That's also one area. So um, what the commission listed here is um, 
uh, in principle, also ISP satellite network providers, but also radio and TV broadcasters. So they could basically tell you, oh, if you have a subscription, was that used for somewhere else um, to, to gain insight into where people were using the service from, for example. Um, However, in having further talks with the Commission, we found out that might also uh, include IoT services, um, all sorts of other communications where the, um, uh, the, only, um, uh, the only requirement is that the company uh, offering the service controls the transmission of the signals over the network, which obviously falls for every closed service. Um, so it's a very broad definition. Um, it gets even worse if you look at the information society services. Um, they're obviously looking at social networks like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, um, uh, uh, online marketplaces, Amazon, eBay, uh, Twitter Hunts was um, uh, explicitly mentioned uh, as examples. Um, but also, and this is where it gets tricky, um, hosting service providers like um, Amazon Web Services, OVH, uh, cloud service providers for corporate infrastructure. Um, what does that mean? Basically, everything which is stored with someone else could be accessed through that um, uh, regulation. Um, and they also mentioned um, services like YouTube for uploaded um, uh, uh, videos, uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, Microsoft uh, Office 365. I was kind of like, oh, wait a second, does that mean uh, documents stored there? Yes, that's what it means. Um, uh, online gaming websites uh, or even things like iTunes. So what did you download there and when did you use the service from where? Um, this is all stored data. So you could basically get um, uh, uh, transaction data from these services. Um, for the uh, interdomain IP numbering service, they use RIPE as an example for the IP addresses. Uh, for registries, uh, your ID, uh, uh, the Dutch registration service, but that obviously goes for the German registration service and all the similar ones as well. So this is just examples. Uh, registers like uh, ovh.com, uh, KPN, and things like that. But also privacy and proxy service providers, uh, United Domains was uh, 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 listed because they, um, they provide the um, anonymity service um, nowadays under the GDPR um, so that you can't see who's actually behind the domain. So they can target these as well in order to um, release who's actually um, ordering the service. Um, well, to be very clear, um, it is all data stored in a single member state, which is supposed to be released to a requesting member states law enforcement authority within 10 days, or in emergencies, even within six hours. So service providers are required to deliver a full set of data stored with them within six hours if that it's declared a very important inquiry um, without involving your national uh, authorities at all. Um, the idea behind it is that um, each EU member state has its own sovereign laws um, and that the law enforcement procedures uh, can be followed through to investigate in all EU member states um, regardless of the locality of the actual stored data. Um, it, it, the service providers are not even supposed to check the legality of the request. Um, and most often they will not be able to do so because they don't know the, the law system of the country where the inquiry actually comes from. Uh, and that is not harmonized. Criminal law is not harmonized throughout the EU. So um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the time frames, uh, what can be prosecuted, what even is a punishable offense, things like that, is not harmonized throughout the EU. Um, at all. Um, can leaders do that already? That's a question I often uh, hear. Um, uh, in principle, they can, al they can already do that. They can access all sorts of stored information uh, if, they invest if they have an ongoing investigation and to further a case or uh, further the ongoing investigation, they can already submit a request for stored data, but not to the service provider. They'll have to go to the law enforcement authorities of the country where the service provider resides um, uh, or the customer resides um, in order to get that processed. So um, the authorities of uh, where the seat of the service providers will have to um, process um, the request and will only forward it to the service provider if that is a punishable offense under local law and, um, uh, they, and, and the request warrants a release of the data. There might be other provisions why that is not acceptable to release the data. Um, uh, this is all um, circumvented by this um, proposed regulation. 
Um, normally, it's the obligation of the local authorities to observe all local laws, um, that the individual fundamental rights um, and all legal remedies are given to the person uh, in question and things like that. That's all upheld under the normal procedures, the multilateral agreement um, by the local authorities. Um, so what are the challenges to individual rights? Um, there are certain problem areas identified. Obviously, the enforcement of due process and the legal remedies for the individual are not clear at all. If you live in a country, um, data from you is requested. Um, what do you know about what is happening in Voga Voga land, whatever? I mean, uh, what, what, this, um, what, what the legal remedies are there? How do you actually file a court case? What are your rights and under their data protection laws and everything? You just don't know. Um, and there's no harmonization in that as well. Um, even the information after uh, a case is closed and you were cleared maybe to, that you're informed that data of you was handled at all. There is no harmonization for that as well. You might never learn that, that your data was actually released. Typically under national law there are provisions that this happens to this and that extent one way or the other. This, um, uh, this uh, proposed regulation does not cover that at all. Only the law of the requesting country is, um, uh, is taken into account. So we have some examples on uh, where that might affect people. Um, a good example is abortion in Poland. It's illegal there. You might have several years um, of uh, jail time for that. Um, uh, in other countries, it's completely legal. So if you would use email services to arrange for that in the Netherlands, you might be very careful that... Um, uh, that, that you won't have that uh, visible in Poland, um, uh, still it might be requested now from the Netherlands. Um, and you might be prosecuted, uh, prosecuted based on that. Um, we had a good example in Germany earlier this year when Puigdemont was um, even within the authorities. They actually um, put him um, uh, under hold at some point. But the German um, court ruled, wait, the offense where the... Um, arrest order was, uh, was uh, put into effect. That's not even prosecutable in Germany. So they had to release him again. But everything um, which would have happened in between, telephone calls, cloud data, anything, emails um, sent from that could have been requested by the um, Spanish authorities if that were already law. Um, good, another good example, in, um, in Austria it's legal to use um, uh, toll data um, in uh, uh, to, to, uh, to actually build a case against someone where did uh, someone use um, the roads. Um, there's a provision in German law that you can't do that. So the data of toll collect cannot be asked for by uh, the authorities to build um, a criminal case. Um, there's no provision that this is not going to happen. Meaning, data can be inquired from a foreign country which your national law enforcement authorities cannot even inquire. Um, which is, it's very hard to explain to local law enforcement that they cannot ask for data which other European countries can ask for. Um, we have the same problem with the types of um, cell data, for example, or location data from cell phones. Um, in Spain, it's much, uh, you, you can do um, mass inquiries even for, for whole zones or whole cities, which is illegal in Germany. Um, so a typical um, uh, example from Telefonica, they told us, oh, it's normal, we release um, several hundred thousand um, data sets in, for one inquiry, while in Germany this would be completely illegal. Um, also, there is no harmonization for the treatment of stored data, uh, personal, so very personal information, per photos, diaries, um, but also if you look at the fact that they want to to go for cloud service providers for enterprises. What about company secrets about intellectual property rights? Are we supposed to release everything, your whole cloud storage, co whole corporate networks, cloud storage, to law enforcement based on a request which might not even be prosecutable in your own home country? Um, it's, it's very unclear, and that has not been um, remedied in the talks over the course of the year. Um, Interesting enough, a similar measure would never be accepted in the physical world. So imagining um, the Hungarian police uh, ringing at, at uh, some flat in Vienna uh, somewhere in the morning, just uh, looking at it, copying everything they want and leaving again, not even telling the Austrian authorities they were there. Completely unthinkable. No one would accept that. Um, or no country would accept that. Um, but in the digital world, 
it's exactly the same. So they, they think, well, why not? It's just digital data. Um, uh, the same is um, they have certain constitutional rights. Um, um, uh, best one, uh, well, obviously I know that best because I'm from Germany, but we have something which is called the Kernbereichsschutz in Germany. That is um, the, uh, the core private life, which is uh, protected even from law enforcement. They cannot look at this data. Um, uh, and in the Lisbon contract, there was even a provision for that, that no European um, law can infringe on that right. Um, this one does, if it becomes law. So, um, uh, obviously, it's not thought through, and it needs some amendments. Um, there are also procedural problems. Um, so, every judicial authority of a member state is authorized to issue a European production and preservation order and directly contact the service provider um, that offer the service. So we're talking about tens of thousands of service providers throughout the EU, but we're also talking about thousands of authorities which are in principle allowed to issue these um, uh, production and preservation orders. So in Germany, this is 900 eligible authorities. We counted them, and we did some counts in some other countries, so we estimated to be 13,000 um, authorities which can go to every single service provider and ask them to produce data an impossible amount. How should the service provider be able to detect manipulation? How do, should we even know that, um, that this is a, a genuine request that the, the authority inquiring the data is even allowed to do so? Um, so possibly the EU Commission could publish an official list of authorized agencies, but it says, oh, no, we're not going to do that. Um, this is the individual uh, country's responsibility, and um, the countries do not want to publish this list of authorized agencies, which makes it even more strange is that um, coming up with the idea, hmm, uh, is this going to be electronic inquiries, which are signed, which we can ma maybe check upon? No, no, no. This could be paper, it could be fax, it could be anything. Um, so, um, another area which is uh, not um, uh, harmonized and where the uh, regulation has problems is um, the regulation of maximum penalties or minimum penalties. It's a bit unclear. Um, uh, one of these orders can only be um, sent out if the um, uh, the crime you're accused of is punishable in the issuing states uh, with a sentence of at least three years. But this is, um, it's, it's not really very much. So there could be fraud, there could be anything. So three years is a joke, um, especially looking at the fact that there might be several countries inquiring the data. And um, even if in your country or in, in your neighboring country it might be only two years, there could be another country in the EU where there's a five-year penalty on exactly the same crime. So this doesn't really give you anything. Um, and a case-by-case -case examination of the service provider is not possible anyway. How sh should a service provider be able to check if that specific offense, which he's not really even in detail told about because not, he's not allowed to know what the specific offense is. Um, how should you check if that, is, if that legality is upheld? Um, and if, if the request of the assessment of the state inquiring the data that, yes, this is an offense punishable, punishable by at least three years, um, is, is actually true. The service provider will not be able to do this. Um, uh, and, and the same thing goes for the question if, if that is punishable in my country at all. Um, so we cannot uh, really tell. Um, uh, these problems could be solved by a binding uh, list uh, from the European Union, and that would be sensible in uh, considering harmonization is what they're really trying to do, um, so that specific offenses are listed in, in sort of a catalog where you can say, okay, but this, this offense on a pan-European level, we see this minimum sentencing or things. But uh, the, the states have signaled they have no interest whatsoever in harmonization in the criminal laws. So they don't want to produce that catalog and they cannot agree on a catalog. Um, so um, it's... It is it's very clear that um, uh, obviously companies should not be permitted to produce data for foreign authorities that would domestically be not punishable. Um, but uh, it is un very unclear right now how this can be achieved, how, um, uh, uh, how a service provider is even able to check that anything he receives is, um, is genuine. Um, 
Uh, the same goes for the relationship to third-party states. Um, there should be a provision in there that transfer of the data um, gained should not be allowed to be transferred to a third party. Um, so so uh, uh, one European member state requests data and then shares it with the US, for example. I think it's very clear that this should not happen. Um, uh, but at the moment, uh, individual member states uh, can negotiate their own individual agreements um, with whom they share data under what provisions. Um, and um, we think that there should be um, something in, um, in the regulation that says, no, this can only be done through the entire union. If, for example, the US Cloud Act, there's a provision that data is shared with the EU, it should be harmonized, it should be the same regulations, the same way to do this. Um, throughout the European Union so that not one country can do their own individual um, uh, contract on that. Um, uh, the same goes for the existing process. There is a process um, of voluntary cooperation and a lot of countries have individual um, contracts between each other um, on uh, how to share data. So uh, whatever the Netherlands and Germany have a contract, Austria and Germany have a contract, um, France and Spain have a contract and how to to um, help each other in gaining this data. Um, uh, currently, it's not clear um, uh, what is the leading law. Um, will this um, be the, the new regulation, be the conclusive agreement, or will the individual contracts still be upheld, uh, especially if, um, if there are lower standards? And in some cases, there are lower standards um, uh, uh, for, for this cooperation than what the epoch now uh, stipulates. Um, and uh, obviously this also goes for the non-EU states um, and the production of evidence there. Um, so it must be very clear for all parties involved what is the, uh, the new standard and which standard should be applied. Um, even worse, there are no technical provisions whatsoever. The proposed regulation is only about procedures and um, uh, minimum sentencing and things like that. Um, there isn't even um, uh, an opening clause to come up with a technical specification. Um, so, but in order to make this a timely response, if we consider six hours and things like that, we need a technical regulation, um, if something like this will even come to pass. Um, so um, for the European investigative order, there's an ETSI standard which secures the integrity and the privacy of the data while it is transmitted. It's obviously encrypted. Um, for the epoch, there's nothing. It's not even clear how this is supposed to be transmitted. You could receive a fax and then what do you do? You produce electronic data. You don't even know what to send it to. Unencrypted via email? Um, that's, uh, there's no provision in there at all. And if the opening clause for technical provision will not be in the proposed regulation, then you cannot have a technical provision afterwards. You need to amend the regulation. Um, so this is really a requirement which is absolutely essential uh, in a digital world. Um, I can't even understand how someone can come up with a proposal for electronic evidence which does not say it needs to be transmitted electronically. I mean, it's... Well, okay. Yeah, well, for, for people versed in... Uh, uh, digital matters, it's, it's I, I don't know. It's, um, so the same goes for companies. I mean, obviously, a lot of you probably work for providers or, so, or, 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 or some, some companies which offer digital services. Um, so in, in, in principle, um, a unified procedure for a single market. I mean, we're working on the single European market for electronic communication, for uh, electronic goods and services. So. Uh, in principle, the idea that there is a unified procedure uh, on, on how to access data and what data should be accessed is, is not a bad idea. I have to admit, it's sometimes very difficult to work, uh, to, to work in the current system where there are uh, individual agreements between some states and, um, and, and what can be shared and how it's done is a bit unclear. And you never know when your lo own local law uh, authorities uh, talk to you and request some data if this is actually for some other country. You never know. So a uh, procedure would be very helpful. Um, but the, the direct contact of... Um, uh, of foreign state authorities with, with you as a service provider in another country um, means there is a discharge of uh, sovereign tasks by your own state. Um, 
And that is something uh, which we view is very problematic because who is responsible to uphold the rights of the individuals in that setup? Will that be discharged to, to, the, uh, to the private company, uh, the private sector? Uh, it's um, something which uh, obviously politicians are trying to do um, all throughout the EU, um, typically within national law, so there's a lot of state responsibilities being outsourced to private sector companies nowadays. But on international law or international um, treaties, you, you'd almost never see that. Um, so um, why is that in here? Why are, um, are the state uh, responsibilities simply ignored um, and uh, the, the individual countries have no rights, no safeguards, nothing in there to protect their own citizens? Um, that, uh, that we as industry view as a big problem. Um, because obviously this is all also about liabilities. Um, uh, it needs to be clear for a service provider if I release data based on that regulation um, that I'm only acting on, uh, an official, uh, in an official capacity, uh, working on an official state order and carry out measures that have been prescribed by, well, yes, some other state, but at least by some state. So I'm not liable for releasing that data. Um, under the current proposal, it's not even clear if the user could not sue me for the releasing that data. Um, Yes, it is EU law, but it's very unclear um, how that relates to the national law about safeguarding data of the individuals. Um, uh, actually, there, there is an, one provision is in there which states that if I don't follow the order, if I don't release the data in a timely manner, I could be fined up to 2% of my turnover um, as, a, as a company. Um, so, um, again, very, uh, very hefty um, uh, uh, financial uh, risk not responding uh, in, uh, in emergencies within a couple of hours. So uh, will I be, am I willing to take that risk? Am I willing as a company to, uh, to, to not follow that order and actually do some checks, do, do some legality checks? Um, um, I might not. Um, if, if I'm a large company, I'm talking about um, several million uh, euros or even a billion euros or something like that in potential fines for not following that request. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult, so th this should really be uh, put into, uh, into the proposal. Um, uh, it should also be very clear that um, if that was a man manipulated re request, then I could uh, have no means to check this. I have no means to do a signature check or something like that. If, if I receive a fax with a stamp from some court somewhere, I cannot verify if that is even a, a, a true court, if that even exists, or if that has the authority to request this type of data. Uh, under the current proposal, I'm supposed to simply release data. Um, I'm not even supposed to properly check this. So um, can I be made liable if that was fraud, let's say court fraud? Um, that um, we think is a big problem, at least for the companies. Um, how can you do business in an environment like that? Um, and obviously, you cannot check if that, uh, if, if that is legal in 28 different legal systems. Um, uh, and it should also be clear, and that's also not part of the, uh, of, of the proposition right now, um, that the data cannot be used for something else. Um, so it was requested for, for, one, uh, for one thing, and it can be used in a, in a different um, legal case. Not even that is in there. Um, and also, it should be very clear that, um, uh, that evidence released to a law enforcement authority and then it, it becomes clear that this data should not have been released, that it cannot be used in, in court, um, and um, that is also not in there. Um, so, um, what is the current status of the proposal? Um, where are we in the process? Um, it's not law yet. It's not passed. Um, the European Data Protection Board uh, adopted um, uh, a resolution that said this is very critical and it's not supposed or shouldn't happen um, uh, uh, on the 26th of September. Um, but the council, so the, the, the EC council, uh, uh, adopted it as is without amendments on the 7th of December. So um, if it goes through parliament as well, um, then it would become law immediately. Um, if the parliament stops it, um, then um, uh, th then there will be trilogue um, uh, disputes, um, and it can we can actually still prevent it from, from become law. Um, um, the parliament held a hearing on the 28th of November, um, and it's currently not clear if there will be any further hearings or proceedings um, before the EU election in May. 
Um, so what is required? And that's where I say it should be a call to action. Um, please, um, in this case, really, um, NGOs, um, uh, private individuals and companies, we're all on the same side here. Um, um, this should not come to pass as it is, because it will really rob you of, of, um, uh, of, of, of clear law and a clear system on where you are, um, on what is really um, uh, the law system you work in, and you can actually have a, uh, have a clear understanding on of what you, if you save something on the net or if you put something in storage somewhere, if that is not released to someone else. Um, only a handful of companies opposed the regulation, um, so there was, active, um, uh, there was active opposition to that. There was Germany, the Netherlands, Finland and Greece, and also Hungary, Hungary Latvia and the Czech Republic, but on different grounds, because they thought it doesn't go far enough. Um, so, um, well, <laughs> that's uh, the, the typical um, things you have in, in, the, um, in the council. Um, however, the, the, the primary advocates for the proposal were France, Spain, Ireland and Belgium. So they sponsored it. Um, so especially in these countries, it would be helpful if people um, would become active, talk to their governments locally, talk to their parliaments, um, and actually say, okay, well, what is happening here? Why do you support this? Support can still be withdrawn until this was actually um, adopted. Um, uh, also, obviously, uh, people should talk to, uh, to their members of parliament um, uh, and make clear that this is not something which should become law. Um, so, um, as I said, there is still some, some time to act, probably the first quarter at least, um, maybe up until after the European election in May. Um, and I, I hope that, uh, that, that there will be some action that people see that this is a big problem and um, these uh, production orders should not come to pass. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, materials used, um, I recommend these um, uh, as reading. So there was the op uh, opinion of the European uh, Data Protection Board, the original proposal, uh, but also a study for the Parliament done, um, so the Liebe Committee of the, um, of the Parliament, which also strongly um, requests the Parliament not to adopt this. So um, uh, if you're interested in the topic, um, look at these materials and... Um, yeah, I'm uh, open for questions and further. Thank you very much for the talk, Klaus. We still have quite some time for questions and answers, so if you have any questions, uh, you can move to any of the microphones we have here in the room, and then we will be happy to take your questions. Are there any questions from the internet so far? Doesn't seem so. There's Still, still thinking about it, maybe. So, let us start with microphone number five. Uh, when pushing for the electronic signatures and the uh, proof to have a valid request, wouldn't it also be wise to uh, ask for a secondary legal uh, check by the local authority? Uh, because when you have a digital um, a, a, a format, you can also uh, speed up the check by the authorities. Um, yes, we, we thought that, uh, well, actually what, what the service providers proposed was um, that it should actually be sent out from the local authorities to some central um, uh, agency within the state and they, well, the original requesting authority to sign it, the, the outgoing um, uh, central authority should have signed it, then there was an inbound, which is called double tandem, so that both countries actually check on it and then only then it's forwarded to the service provider and you would be able to check signatures um, on this. So, so that there was a legality check and also an integrity or an authorization check on this. But it was flatly refused. Even in Germany, the Bundesamt, um, uh, um, Bundesamt for Justiz, and they said, oh, oh, but we can't do this 24-7 within six hours. It's impossible. Um, so uh, every service provider is supposed to do it, but they cannot do it. But the check, the actual, uh, the, the, the legality check, uh, outbound and inbound, we think this is absolutely mandatory to do. Thank you. Next question from microphone number two. Thanks, Klaus, for, this, for reporting about this nightmare. Um, when there is an incoming request from a local authority, let's say to DKIX, um, is there any proposal in which language it should be? Should it be in German or in Polish? Or are you expected to learn all these uh, languages? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, well, actually, DKIX cannot have these requests, but different story. Um, uh, uh, 
Actually, uh, every company or every service provider is supposed to publish an address to forward requests to and the languages they are willing to accept um, uh, these in on their website. <laughs> it's, um, don't, ask, don't ask me why. We, we thought that um, as with the list of authorities being eligible to request a list of service providers which can actually receive these, um, it would be a nice thing to compile on a, on a national level and then be exchanged um, uh, maybe through, through Europol or something like that. But um, again, flatly refused because um, one, it's too difficult to compile this list of authorities uh, who can inquire. Um, and uh, electronic signing is completely out of the question. Um, uh, this is supposed to be uh, a couple of years before the, the um, local authorities can sign stuff. Um, and um, also, um, the, the, this finite list of service providers who can actually receive it um, uh, was um, supposed to be impossible to compile because uh, you've seen there's some, some rather open um, uh, definitions in there, like these um, uh, 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 controlling signals on the network stuff, right? Um, uh, the, anyone who's, who's uh, 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 transmitting and storing data uh, in, in some fashion could potentially be a target. So um, uh, the authorities thought that it's impossible to compile a, a complete list of uh, 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 potential recipients. I'd like to remind the people who are already leaving to please do so quietly and everybody else who's in the room to also be quiet. Next question for microphone number three, please. So since you have a big German audience, um, sorry, the echo. Uh, since you have a big German audience, uh, which of the German European Parliament politicians support and oppose this, and which of them do you think should we direct our attention to? Mm. I, I honestly, I cannot answer that because I haven't talked to the uh, German members of Parliament because we were able to convince the German government that this is a bad idea and they opposed the measure altogether. Um, so we need to do this now. Um, the, the, and we, we also need to go to Parliament, of course, but uh, my colleague in Brussels already did this, but I don't know who he actually talked to and um, who he didn't. Um, that would be Thomas Bielmeier of ECHO. He's talking to the Parliament there. My microphone number seven, please. Yes. Uh, how are the sending authorities supposed to identify where to send the request? Like, even if you look up an IP address, it not, might not actually be the company that, uh, uh, that's responsible for the server. It might even be like the upstream ISP of the co-location company that has a customer that's where you're supposed to send a request. Um, a very good question. <laughs> no, I, I seriously cannot answer. The, the proposal doesn't, uh, doesn't stipulate that. There is no provision in there how to find out who the actual service provider is. Um, so, um, that, but, but that problem is there today as well. So they, they, they need to identify who the service provider is um, today as well. So it, there's really no change for the, um, for the requesting authorities there. Microphone number six, please. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I was wondering, so you, you said uh, uh, attacking state laws are above the targeting, targeted state laws. Um, could this uh, could, could there be uh, any protection? Like, if my state's constitution says uh, a foreign law cannot apply here, uh, could it invalidate the regulation? That's what we're aiming for. We hope that this will will actually come because this is what what would be required. If, um, the, the, for example, there are. Um, uh, preventions to use data for um, uh, doctors and uh, par members of parliament and things like that, that's not even in there as well. So, so if, if there are local um, uh, requirements that data cannot be released, that is not upheld as well. Um, so, um, and uh, this is actually a good attacking point for, for members of parliament to tell them, well, you know what, <laughs> under this, even your data can be released. Um, and they're typically very proud of their, um, of their protection. Um, uh, it's, uh, this, this proposed regulation doesn't clarify this. You, will, uh, you have to release the data no matter what because the presumed check already happened at the re requesting entity um, and it's only uh, a question if it's uh, punishable with at least three years in the requesting state. So your law doesn't matter at all um, uh, in the uh, regulation as it is right now. Now the time of the internet has come and they will be asking their question. Yes. I actually have kind of a double question. For one, does is law enforcement actually defined in a way, or is it um, just law enforcement without any definition? It's um, 
Well, it is actually, um, so for some things you need a court order as well, so it's basically um, uh, uh, police, um, the state attorneys, um, uh, and the courts uh, on the div different levels. Um, and um, uh, in, under some local jurisdictions, um, it's very clear that data can also be requested by secret services and things like that as well. So they would probably fall in that, in that range as well. Even so, uh, it explicitly says um, that, that it's only for criminal proceedings. So um, it's, it's very difficult to tell if they will probably be able to, to send this through some police uh, agency or something like that. So, but it, it's clearly just for criminal proceedings. And does um, one actually need to go to kind of a judge, um, in, even in the requesting country, or is it completely free to send a request? That depends on what the local law says. If you can request IP addresses, names, uh, certain types of data in the local law without a judge, so if police or the state attorney can do it, then only their signature is required. If the local law states that it's, uh, uh, the judge uh, is required, then you would need the authorization by a judge. However, if you want content data, that's a special po point in there. Um, so if you want uh, content or whatever, of a cloud service or something like that, it will always require the signature of a judge. But this could be from a, a local court. Microphone number two, your time has come. Please do go very close to the microphone for the wonderful talk and preparing it in such a short time. Uh, I would have two questions that uh, popped into my mind. One of them is that we have extensive cooperation contracts between um, legal entities within the European Union. So if I see this correctly so far, um, the proposed procedure would allow to basically play it um, in tandem to get the information. So my police is going to ask someone else's police, uh, the police from another state, to ask for data that, I can, uh, that, that the police can't ask for. And I don't see how this is omitted in any way. Well, I had this, uh, I had this in, in the presentation that uh, we think that, that uh, only the, 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 um, uh, the state where there are actually criminal proceedings should be able to, to request the data. Um, but it's not very clear in the, uh, right now in, in the uh, proposed regulation. Um, so this needs to be clarified. We think that uh, especially this, this part that data can be handed, uh, pro uh, handed on to someone else because you have a different contract in place, that this should be ex explicitly prohibited um, under, this, uh, under this regulation. It's not part of, of the uh, proposal right now. Microphone number two, please do ask your second question. Um, the other point was, when does data count as being stored? Is this like two minutes, two minutes after I finished my phone call, or um, an hour, or 24 hours? Or? Um, well, the proposal doesn't say. Um, typically, uh, that is also something which is under, under local law. Uh, and it actually differs from country to country what is considered stored data, but it's typically all sorts of... Um, uh, of, of account data, all sorts of uh, data which is stored more formal like emails, uh, cloud data, and things like that. It's uh, data in transit, is, uh, which is only temporarily stored somewhere, is tip does typically not count as stored data. Microphone number five. As an enterprise, can I um, skip or be out of the scope if I run my own mail server like universities or um, other big companies? Um, well, if you, if, you, if you run your own services, you're, you're obviously out of scope uh, for the proposal because it need to be a service provider enable, uh, enabling other persons in order to do that. And obviously, it wouldn't do much good to, to send you a request to release your own data. Um, uh, but uh, universities and things like that, that is, that is really up to, to local law. So in, under certain provisions, that, I don't know that for, for many countries, but I know that in Germany, uh, for emails, for example, they have an exemptions. They don't need to provide that. Um, so um, it, this is part of what, what, what do I mean when I say we need to, to actually change local procedures as well um, to clarify who's within scope and who's not. This is all about, oh, it's kind of like up to local law, but if, if I'm not required to store something or to actually have data, um, and then someone from Spain or whatever inquires something because uh, companies there are required to, to, to store that. Um, well, 
obviously, if I'm not uh, if I'm not storing anything, then I can't release anything. But it might work the other way around. Like um, in Poland, they have data retention for five years. Um, in some other countries, they don't have data retention laws at all, or maybe even maybe six months. Um, and then you request something, and you receive data for five years. That's obviously not intended from from the requesting entity. So this might work both ways. And the internet has the honor of asking the final question for the session. Uh, so one Kusha uh, user asked if we should use the law against the politicians which um, proposed it, if it actually comes into effect to kind of show them how bad it really is. Well, if you, if you get some other law enforcement agency to request that data, yes, <laughs> you, should, you, could, you could do that um, because there's no provision against it. But um, uh, it's, uh, I can't really <laughs> answer that, sorry. All right, anyways, thank you very much for all of your questions. Thank you so much for being so active. Also, thank you very much to Klaus again for giving this very informative talk. Please give another big round of warm applause to Klaus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.